All right, I am excited to be back working on the Xterra and we have a really fun project today. Today we're going to be putting on a hitch. Now I bought a Kurt bolt-on hitch and uh, it's gonna be a, hopefully straightforward. They say you don't need to do any drilling and you know some standard tools at home will do the job. So uh, let's see if they're right. Now there's three main components to the kit that I bought. There is obviously the hitch, there is the receiver, and there is a T-connector. Now the T-connector is for the actual trailer wiring, and the Nissan, at least mine is, I, most all of them should be, most if not all, are pre-wired for trailer lights. So we just need to take this T-connector and literally plug it in behind uh, the rear left wheel and run it up to our hitch once it's installed. Should be really, really easy. So uh, let's get started, get this out of the box, and get this hitch under the truck. Now when you first buy stuff like this and when you first start these projects, you want to check a few things. First of all, make sure that it comes with all of the hardware that it promises it comes with. Um, all the nuts, bolts, washers, all that. Uh, and then secondly, uh, figure out your space. So get underneath the truck, look around, see what's going to be an obvious obstruction, what's going to get in your way. Because what's going to happen is, if you try to install this when there's things in the way, it's just going to get be a headache, right? It's either going to be much more difficult and you can accomplish it, or you won't be able to accomplish it at all until you get those obstacles out of the way. So, I looked under my Xterra. I see the spare tire. That's going to have to get dropped. Uh, the exhaust is certainly going to be in the way. And then uh, we might actually even have to remove the bumper. Um, you need to get nuts and um, washers inside of the frame and uh, it looks like the bumper sits right at the end of the frame kind of closing it off so uh, i'm going to start removing the tire i'm probably just going to wait on the exhaust until i absolutely need to and then reevaluate the bumper if that does need to get removed i'll just have to take it off let's keep going Now, I did go ahead and remove the bumper. You technically do not have to uh, remove the bumper, all right? Now, the three bolts on each side that hold the bumper in are one, two, and three, these three up front. Now, the actual washers and bolts that are provided are what you're gonna end up using. So, you could have left this bolt in on both sides, and that would have held the bumper in place. Uh, I'm, I removed it mostly so you guys could see, you know, what I'm doing, but it adds a little bit, you know, of extra complication. Next, what you want to do is make sure that your hitch fits. Now you are, if you do remove your bumper, you are going to have extra space because obviously it's making room for the bumper plates on both sides. So don't worry that there's a little bit of slack. I mean, if there's a ton of slack, you know, then you're going to end up having problems, uh, mostly because the these aren't close enough to screw bolts into in each side um, that could happen if you were previously in an accident or if you have some sort of frame torque um, happening for whatever reason so the three uh, holes that we're going to use for the hitch itself are uh, these three one two and this one back here uh, they are m12 and m14 bolts and again your kit should have come with it my original plan was to put the rear bolt in and kind of let the hitch hang and then swing it up into place uh, once I got the bumper back in place. The only problem with that is the uh, exhaust. Now, the exhaust, I decided I am not going to mess with. Um, it is a full welded system. So, I mean, there's no real connectors you can kind of disconnect and jiggle around. Uh, I just, I don't want to touch it. I'm, I'm going to avoid it. So. What I plan to do is take my hitch, or excuse me, yeah, we'll take my hitch, take a car jack, and hold it in place while I put the rear bolts in. Once the rear bolts are in, it'll sit in place and it'll be held up, and then I can put the bumper on and start connecting the uh, other bolts. So, uh, wish me luck. <laughs>
All right, so one side's in. I have it being supported by the jack. And then just line up the other one. Right. Perfect. Okay, so we have it supported in place by the, uh, by the actual car lift and I have it generally lined up, all right? So lined up would be right about here. So it's in place and there's space enough to slide the actual bumper back into place. So that's actually what I'm gonna do next. So I'm gonna leave this here. In fact, I'm just gonna lift it a little bit. So it's exactly in place. Perfect. So it's, it's exactly where it's gonna be sitting. So I'm gonna slide the bumper back into place, put at least one bolt back in each side of the bumper, preferably this top bolt, and then uh, secure the rest of the hitch with the rest of the bolts. So be sure to have all of your bolts ready with the actual washers on them. Like, so that way when you are in the middle of everything, you're not uh, scrambling to try to get these on and get them into place. So I'm going to set these on each side, get them prepared, and then I am gonna go grab that bumper. All right, bumper's sort of in place. Just get everything to line up correctly. And there is a hole in the top of the bumper, so the, the third hole that you actually don't use. Get those in first. Those are the ones you're gonna wanna get in and make sure that they're solid before moving forward. So that way you have bolts in the bumper and you have bolts in the hitch securing it in place so things are not sliding around on you when you are uh, trying to get everything else finished. Uh, so let me get over here. Uh, there we go. Perfect. All right, so quick recap. This is be still being held in place by this here. We wanna make sure that we're very careful about that. Don't push it or kick it or move it on any of that. It is secured in the, by the rearmost bolt and then the bumper is in with the topmost bolt and then now we just have the two, the two bolts that came with the hitch. Now, you do, the bolts that came, you know, that were actually put the bumper in and kept the bumper in will work. Um, I'm not going to use those. I don't really know what the repercussions are. I'm just gonna use the bolts that Kurt gave us to use and not really, uh, not really mess with it. So I'm gonna get those last four in and get everything threaded and moved in with your fingers. Um, don't really torque anything down just yet. We'll make sure everything, you know, looks right, is sitting right, make sure the bumper's on right. Uh, before we really torque everything down. Once you have the bolts in on one side, you know, for everything that the Kurt came with, uh, you can actually remove this. Obviously, it's not going to fall forward if you have your bolts in on one side. Okay, the last two we're gonna put in finger tight.
Okay, so we have everything in finger tight. Now what we're gonna do is just get out from underneath the car, take a look where everything sits and make sure it's where we want it to be. All right, uh, everything is looking pretty good actually. Um, the bumper looks like it's where it should be. The uh, hitch looks like it's in a good place. Now, the thing you wanna make sure of or make, is uh, that these are not rubbing. Now, when you're, when you're installing them, they're bound to rub a little bit. Um, and I've already got a few scratches, but really not the end of the world. Um, but once they're in place, there should be, you know, it may be tiny, but there should be a little bit of space between these two so they're not rubbing. Um, that's gonna be, uh, you know, at, at a minimum, it's gonna be annoying if you hear it, some rubbing. Uh, at a maximum, you know, you could be damaging the hitch, which, you know, you don't wanna do after you just installed it. So we're gonna continue by torquing down the rest of these uh, bolts into place. And then once they're in, uh, we are gonna wire it up. Now, this is the driver's side of the vehicle. It's right underneath this main cross member that holds your spare tire. You're gonna see this big gray connector, all right? This is the connector for the trailer lights. So just take that out. There should be a plug in here. Woo, all right. So it's gonna look like this. This is just basically the empty plug that uh, they use so it doesn't get damaged. And then you have your new one right here. And you just wanna plug that in. Perfect. And then my kit, which is I believe a Kurt brand kit, came with uh, zip ties. So I'm just gonna zip tie this along here. We gotta actually reconnect that for the... Uh, bumper but we have this and remember your spare tire sits right about here so it, this whole area so I'm gonna actually kind of go behind here and then just zip tie it and make sure it gets to the end of the hitch it's really that easy Okay, so we are officially uh, finished with installing the actual hitch itself. The rest is just throwing some wiring in under the kick panel on the passenger side, front side of the truck. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just throw my receiver in and then I'm going to throw this uh, spare tire back up there and then, honestly, I'm going to go take a break. Okay, now the last piece of this kit is uh, just a little electrical harness that comes with uh, three separate outputs and one input. Now this is just like a 12 pin input and it goes out to three separate relays. And the three relays it comes with are uh, two blue ones, it's just an RY, or excuse me, two YR00, and then just one big brown one. That's kind of the best way I can describe it. But what you wanna do is just connect them in, just basically connect each relay to its obvious place. They can't really go in any other way. Okay, so we'll connect that one. Good. And good. Now, we wanna take off the inside kick panel on the passenger side. And to do that, we need to take out the uh, sill cover here. So basically, with this, it's really, really easy. Take a flathead screwdriver, pop this out, um, you might even be able to do it with your fingers. Yeah, there you go. That was easy. And then back here you have like a, it's sort of like a screw. It has a flat head slot in it, but you can really just take it out with your fingers again. And then lastly, you just want to pop this whole thing out. So let's take this. 
Okay. There we go. Perfect. Now hidden back here, there we go. That is the connector that we want to use. Now you're just going to connect the other end of your uh, harness right into that. All right, so we'll kind of fit that in there. Let's see here, how are we going to do this? There we go. There we go until it clicks. Make sure all your other connections are tight. And we're just going to want to kind of tuck this all in here. There we go. Push it all behind so it doesn't get wound up in anything. There we go. And that should do it. So you want to get all this. This is all my other wiring here. <laughs> Tuck it all away. Line everything up here again. All right. Lined up. Line that one up. Pop it back into place. Easy enough. Grab that finger screw. Put that back in. Easy enough. And then grab your kick panel. Line that up. And push it down. There you go. That's it. Now, after actually completing the job, there's a few things I want to point out. Um, first of all, you want to make sure that you get the proper kit. Now, there's two different kinds of kits that you can buy for the T-connector. You can buy just the T-connector, which is that piece in the back that we installed, or you can buy the connector with this kit. Now, it's necessary to have the relay kit because the trailer lights literally just won't work without it. So um, that T-connector kit, that we, the piece that we put in the back is obviously necessary, but they sell it separately because if you have an existing one that already has a trailer kit, put onto it and you have problems with it, you can just replace that as opposed to replacing all the relays. And just make sure you get the right part. Secondly, uh, I kind of determined that if you don't remove the bumper entirely like I did, you probably will have issues getting the, um, getting the hitch into place because the actual exhaust pipe is right next to the bumper. It's very, very close. So you probably have some difficulty um, obviously, I didn't try it without it because you saw that I took off the bumper, um, but you might be able to get that piece over top of the exhaust um, underneath the truck to get it into place without fully taking off the bumper, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but that's really it. So it really wasn't that bad of a job. It's a little bit cumbersome moving, that, uh, moving the hitch around on your own, but you can certainly do it as you can see. So. Uh, as always, question, comments, concerns in the comments below. Thanks for watching.